Okay, uh, this particular problem has one degree of freedom. The uh, blue disc is rotating. If you stop that and, and do not consider the swinging of object B, then there's only one degree of freedom. That means if you give me one uh, velocity, which you do, and one angular acceleration, which you do, then I can find any velocity or acceleration. Uh, so what they want is they want to find the velocity and the acceleration. So this is uh, solvable without any free body diagrams. Okay, as usual, I choose the I and the J uh, to the right and up. And uh, I'm going to use a combination of ropes and uh, the vector loops. Um, you don't really need the vector loops in this case. It might be easier if you use the law of cosines or something of that sort. Basically what you need to do in order to write the length of the rope is, um, well, here's the rope equation right here, I guess. Um, the rope equation, if you see, is equal to 3, this distance right here, plus L, whatever L is, plus Y. So uh, really the problem is to find L. You might be able to use the law of cosines to get that. That might be the easier thing to do. But since I'm trying to demonstrate how to use uh, vector loops for problems that are uh, more complicated, for example, if you don't have a triangle to try and use uh, law of cosines or law of sines with, then you have to resort to something more general. And that's what the uh, vector loops do. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a vector loop that goes from uh, the origin of here to A to C and then back to the origin, right? Uh, and that's this uh, equation right here. The first term, 3 cosine plus sine, that is going from the uh, center to point A. Uh, and then uh, from uh, A to C is a distance L. I don't know what it is. It's a variable, so I just define it to be L uh, and worry about calculating it later. And then I don't know this angle beta, so I just throw it in there. Uh, so I have cosine beta, sine beta uh, in the I and J. And then once I'm at C, then I just move back to the left a distance 5 and I'm back to the origin, so that's equal to 0. Right? So that's your loop equation. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to write the, the length of the rope. The length of the rope is equal to uh, 3 plus L plus Y. And uh, so now what you do is you just simply differentiate everything. So uh, I'll do the easy one first. I take the derivative of the rope equation. The rope is a constant length, so you get 0. Uh, and that's equal to 3 as a constant, so that what you're left with is L dot Y dot. Okay, so um, in this, what this means, if you solve it, I mean Y dot is equal to minus L dot. Uh, take two derivatives, you can do that in your head, I think, and you'll end up with y double dot equals minus l double dot. Uh, the velocity of b, if you look at this, uh, b is, uh, the position of b is y in the negative j direction. So if you differentiate that, uh, you'll get the velocity. So the velocity is equal to a negative y dot. Another way to look at this is if y is increasing, so that would mean y dot is a positive number. If y dot is a positive number, the mass is going down, so the direction should be negative j. The acceleration of b, sim similar arguments, is going to be a minus y double dot. So really, if you want y dot, y double dot, that's what you want. From these equations right here, you can see that really what you want to do is just find l, l dot, l double dot. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, you take your, uh, your loop equation. Uh, which was up right there, and you just bring, let's just bring it down here, and we'll take a derivative. So if you take the derivative of that, I'm showing you how to do it by hand. I'm, you know, I prefer to use Mathematica. These methods are best if you don't have to fight through algebra. So anyway, uh, you can see that I'm taking the derivative of this guy. So the cosine is a minus sine. Don't forget the chain rule. Uh, and then the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Again, the chain rule, right? And then the second term, that's a product, because L is a variable and so is beta. And so you end up with one term here from the derivative of the first term, right? And then you have to add the second, you have to take the, the first term times the derivative of the second. And that's right there. And of course, all this is equal to zero. For the acceleration, you have to take a second derivative. There's no way I'm going to do that by hand. I'm just going to use the computer tool to do that. 
And then what I'm going to do is just try to show you, you don't want to do this by hand. You don't. But I'm going to show you, if you wanted to, this is how you would do it. So first of all, we'll start with this position equation up here at the very beginning, at the top of the, uh, of the screen. And you pull off all of the i's. So if you notice, there's a 3 cosine theta in the i. And then the next i is this L cosine of beta. That's the next one. And then you have a negative 5. And that equals all of the i's on the right-hand side. There aren't any, so it's equal to 0. Right? This should be very common. Okay, and then you pull off the j's. So you have 3 sine of theta. Uh, the next j is at minus L sine beta. And that's it, so that equals 0. Right? So if you're going to solve this, then you take the, uh, what I did was I took the top equation and I just uh, solved for L cos and beta by shoving everything else over to the right hand side. Did the same thing with the second equation. And then I just ratio them. That way the L's drop off. You're left with the tangent of beta is equal to this uh, uh, quantity here. This gives you the ability to find the, the angle beta. And so from uh, the middle equation, you can solve for the the distance L. Like I said, it, you know, for this case, because it's a triangle, uh, it's probably easier to just use the law of cosines and get this uh, relationship uh, for L. But the uh, vector loops are a, a more general way of doing it. Okay, so the next thing then is how do you solve for the derivatives? Well, then you start with the derivative equation, right? And you do the same thing. You pull off all the i. So you have a negative 3 sine theta, uh, theta dot. Another i is the L dot cosine beta. There's another i, L sine beta, beta dot. And that's equal to 0. And then you get the J equation as well. So here's the J's. And then you take these two equations and you solve for the L dot and the beta dot. Never the undotted terms. Only the dotted terms. Okay. So that's basically how you do it. I'm going to pause now and pull up Mathematica and show you how to do that one. Okay, so here we are in uh, Mathematica. This section in here is just uh, some stuff that I wrote that allows you to use i, j, and k. Uh, there's also this uh, vector solve uh, function that I wrote. Uh, you can use it if you like, or you can separate them all uh, by yourself and solve simultaneous equations. This section is simply uh, to simplify the typing. So I define a theta, a beta, an L, and a Y. Uh, and then here's the loop equation that you saw in the previous file. And, uh, and then here's the rope equation. I throw it in there uh, along with it. Might as well solve them all at the same time. Then after you write your loop equations, you simply take two derivatives of it. And yeah, they, they look ugly, but um, they will. it always works. You don't have to worry about whether it's a cosine or a, a triangle, law of cosines, law of sines. You can do those things. It's just uh, oftentimes the, the problems are not uh, so simple. So you need a general way of doing it. Okay, so what do you do? Well, first thing you do is you solve the undotted equations. This is the undotted equations. And what do you solve for? Well, if you look, you have three equations. You have an i. Uh, for, this, for this one, you have an i and a j. Uh, and they all equal each other. But you also have a k. But the k is always going to be, for 2d, it's always going to be 0 equals 0. It's there. It just doesn't help you any. And so you have this third equation here. So you're going to solve for three things. What are the things that are unknown? Well, the things that are unknown is L, beta, and Y. So what do I solve for? I solve for L, beta, and Y. There's your beta, there's your L, and there's your Y. And so you end up with this. And again, you know, beta is an angle, so it's going to give you this conditional expression because it's trying to give you all of the possibilities see here so c is going to go all of the integers and basically it's just adding a, uh, 360 degrees onto it it's a pain in the neck but you get used to it um, and also notice that there are two answers uh, one of the things is a uh, distance of y let's see uh, l okay so if you look at the l the first one is a negative l 
The second one is a positive L, so clearly you want the second answer. Right? Second answer begins right there at that comma. So it's a little difficult to spot them, but if you scroll the screen and stuff, you can. All right, so there's your second solution. You can just, you know, all you want really is the Y. So if you want to, you could uh, copy and paste this guy right here. Just, you know, it might be the easier thing. Copy and paste it in. I'm going to just be a little fancy, and all I do is I say I, for ant, I'm going to call it answer two. I want the second, ant, I want the second solution, and I want to use C1 equals zero. And so it just puts those values in, and here are the here are the solutions with that. And that's okay, not so bad. But one thing that's weird, it, and you know, I'm sure this will frustrate you, but it does me. You know, here's this arctangent, and you notice the denominator terms, they're both the same. So when you take the inverse tangent of this, you're going to end up canceling that out. Mathematica won't do that because as far as it knows, it doesn't know that these yellow terms are, are not zero. I mean, if they're zero, then your solution is completely different than if they are non-zero. So it's trying to be careful when you do that. That's why it sometimes gives you these ugly formulas. But anyway, really what we're looking for is the L anyway. So who cares about the beta? All right, so uh, here is uh, where I'm solving. I'm solving the uh, derivative loop equation. And now what did I solve for before? Well, what I solved for before was beta, beta, L, and Y. So again, I'm going to solve for beta dot, L dot, and Y dot. And then for the second derivative, right, this is the double dot loop equation. You're going to solve for beta double dot, L double dot, and Y double dot. Okay, so when you just uh, put those in, here's your here's your beta dot. Nobody cares about that. Here's your L dot. Nobody really cares about that. This is the this is the one that you're really looking for. This is your Y dot right there. That's the velocity of the of the uh, device. Now, if you notice, it has the beta. Where are you going to find the beta? Well, you solve for it, right? You solve for beta up here. So beta is right there. This is the beta, so you know the beta, and so what you can what you can do is you can just put that into uh, right here where you have a beta for the right. There's a beta right there. Same thing in the accelerations. You're going to have a beta, and you're going to have a beta dot somewhere. There we go. There's the beta dot. Where do you find the beta dot? You solve for it out of this equation right up here. You got the beta dot. It's right there. Okay, so you have all of these things. And uh, so then let's just put it all together. The velocity of B is equal to a minus Y dot. And then I'm just going to put in the, the position answer right there, D, A, N, S. What that does is it puts in the value of L and uh, all of the unknown, undotted terms. And if you notice then, the velocity of B turns out to be right here. At first, you know, here's the first statement, right? This guy. And it has beta in it, and I want to get rid of the beta, so I just substitute in uh, the answer uh, for the positions. And so everywhere it had the beta, it puts in this ugly expression for uh, what beta is. So in this in this case, the only thing that's left is theta, theta dot, the things that are known. And then for the uh, acceleration, it's basically the same. It's just worse algebra, but you know the acceleration is minus y double dot. And uh, so uh, you just, you know, but, but again, uh, the, the acceleration, if you notice, has, at first, it has, all, well, okay, you can't see it because I put semicolons. I didn't want to show it. But anyway, so you take the, the acceleration, you put in the undotted answer, and then you put in, after that, you put in the, uh, uh, let's see, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, you put, you put in the undotted answer here. And then you put in the derivative of the undotted answer. And then I put in the, uh, the, the single dot answer and then the double dot, uh, undotted answer. Oh, man. Uh, and then you simplify and it comes up here. And if you notice, the only thing that's in here is theta. There should be a theta dot in here. Yeah, theta double dot and a theta dot. So the, the only thing that's left are the things that are known. Okay, just to show you because it's hard to see through this algebra. I'm just going to make up some numbers. So I say that theta is 30 degrees, theta dot is equal to, uh, this is the omega, the theta dot would be 
3 and theta double dot is 4. And then I'm going to show you what the position answer is with those numbers, the velocity answer with numbers, and the acceleration with numbers, just to show you that it comes out with numbers. So here, L is equal to 2.8. Uh, the Y has this funky thing in here, well, because you don't really know how long the rope is. So if you don't know how long the rope is, you don't know if it's hanging 10 feet down or 20 feet down, or whatever, it depends on the rope. Right? But the beta, for sure, you've got that. This is in radians. So, uh, you know, be careful of that. And so here's your velocity. If positive means it's going up, uh, and then this guy is your acceleration. So that's it for that one.